Hey, Alan, thanks for joining today. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, perfect. So I'm really excited to talk to you because we've spoken a number of times and I think really some of the great things that you're doing in the space of helping, I'd say solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, small businesses, people that are really independently responsible for their, let's call it sales, marketing, driving business. But then if you think about it, this same person has to, depending on what their function of their business is, still process contracts or invoicing or whatever occupies their day to operate a business. But you have to fill the pipeline. You have to continue to say, uh, sell and be uh, present in social media, just out in the marketplace because you have to stand out. It's a noisy world at this point. And of course, elements of being authentic and really showing aspects of you in a, in a magnified way. So I, I would definitely love to hear really built around. We'll start in the place where it's built around in a real functional manner of what you do, some of your methodologies that you do to help entrepreneurs. And that, I feel like that'd be a cool place to start. Yeah, definitely. So here's one thing that I've learned in the almost two decades that I've been in either production based roles or business for myself is you may have the right product or service, but a prospect can't buy from you if they don't know that you exist. Now, when it comes to getting the word out, you have plenty of means to doing it. You can run an ad, you can send out an email blast, you can do in-person networking, or you can go with a platform that over half of the world's population is on, and that's by using social media. My time in the car business has taught me that the majority of the world, especially in Chicagoland suburbs, needs a car. But unless you are in front of somebody constantly, when that time comes, it's very easy for them to overlook you. It's cool to finally shift gears and go from that sales role where I've just been production based to now sharing knowledge with other commission only sales reps or solopreneurs or other people like yourself that I meet at networking events, man. So grateful for the, for the opportunity to chat with your audience today. And thanks again for having Absolutely. me. Absolutely, man. There, are, Yeah, you touched on a lot of things that I definitely will unpack things. We'll try to keep it really poignant, but I, you touched on one and you didn't say it like this. I'll paraphrase, but like just staying top of mind. I know in my own experience and different aspects of sales too, is I would say consistency, I think is a big factor, what you're talking about. The audience of half the world. I like the kind of way you said that. I know there's a ton of stats out there in, in particular. I was just reading something about podcasting and about videos. I know that YouTube has about 113 million YouTube channels. It's not that they're all active, but the space is just, it almost sounds saturated, but I really believe there's a space for the individual, the people that are reaching. And when you talk about, I guess to tell me about some of the, we'll call it like industry specifics. When you say is an individual sales rep, are you talking about people like realtors or independent sales, like freelance people or what kind of sales? Yeah. Individual? So my audience is commission only sales reps. It could be okay. realtors, loan officers, insurance agents, could be coaches, it could be car sales. And basically anybody who is the brand, but also works inside a brand. My background okay. is in the automotive business. So I've represented Chevrolet and I've represented Lexus, but there's plenty of other dealerships that are out there. So I've had to individually brand myself as a salesperson so that I was able to stand out. As far as stats, I'm going to actually give your audience three stats that everybody should know about social media. Number one, if you were to go on Google right now and type in what percentage of the world population is on social media, I believe the number is over 60%. I think it's 60.4%. Now, that's the first thing. But here's where things get really interesting. And before I actually answer it, I'm going to turn it back to you. If you had to guess, how much time does the average person spend on social media a day? A day? A day. Oh, man, that'd be a really interesting one. I'm just going to throw out something like two hours. I don't know. Maybe that's how close. So if you were to Is go it? on Google right now, there's a few studies that actually show this, but it's right around two and a half hours a day. I think it's two yeah. hours, 37 minutes is the official stat. That's now, insane because there's a lot of people that don't spend time on there. That, so that means that people are spending probably eight hours a day on there or something. So here's what's interesting. You take that two and a half hours, then you just add it up over the course of a year. That's 864 hours, which is the equivalent to 36 full days a year people oh are God. spending on social media. So what Jeez. I love is in this day and age, there's still people that are in business for their self that ask me, hey, Alan, do you think it makes sense for me to advertise on social media? Where I turn back. And I say, dude, 
are you kidding me? If you had the opportunity to share your message and get in front of your audience for free on platforms that people are spending 10% of their entire year on, do you think that's a good idea? Oh my so God. it's mind blowing, that's an incredible stat. but it may seem all glamorous, but the truth is the average attention span of a human being is right around 8.25 seconds. So unless you can stay top of mind in a cool way, you're simply going to get lost in the shuffle. So as I always say, half of the battle marketing online is getting noticed. The other half is simply getting remembered. So if you're not staying top of mind, man, you're going to get forgotten just like that. Yeah. What are two, do you have any kind of methodology or thought process on how to be noticed or continue to stay noticed? Do you have some kind of thoughts around that? Absolutely. So I came up with something called the heat method. And this is important for your audience to, to write down, actually, if you have a, a, a pen and paper. There's four areas of this. Humor, education, adding value, and trust. What this will do is this will give you a strategic edge at every single networking event that you go to. Because if you do this properly, you'll now have the ability to meet somebody in person one time, add them across social media, and then based off of what you post, you're gonna stay top of mind in a cool way. You're gonna build rapport. And ultimately, when that prospect is ready to buy, you're gonna be the obvious choice. So I'll actually take a couple minutes and unpack all these and I'll elaborate on the science behind this. Yeah. So where a lot of businesses get things mixed up is most people go on social media to be entertained. Knowing that is important because if you as a salesperson or a business owner is there to sell and promote your business, but your audience is there to be entertained, there's a disconnect, which yes. means if you just promote and sell, eventually you're going to get unfollowed because it's going to get viewed as spam. So what's interesting is a meme and a GIF are two free things that you can make easily turn into an advertisement with zero graphic design skills. And the science behind here is when people laugh, they tend to remember what made them laugh. And in this case, that's you. And you're, we're in a time right now where a lot of people are running around busy and stressed out. So if you can give somebody a smile, what happens is people naturally gravitate towards those who are able to put a smile on your face. So that's the first thing is the humor. Now, I made the mistake for many years of just getting lost in humor. It's good, but what ends up happening is if you just post funny stuff on social media, people eventually say, hey, are you a That's comedian like yeah. this page or can you actually help me? In the world That's of business, point. here's what's interesting too. In the world of business, we exchange money to solve problems. You and I mm -hmm. were at a networking event yesterday that we exchanged our time and our money to be there to solve the problem of us mm -hmm. meeting more people and expanding our network. So when you educate your audience on a problem that your business solves, everything changes. Because when you sell, you break rapport. But when you educate, you build it. And what happens is when you educate your audience on stuff that they can't just Google, you now are no longer viewed as a salesperson. You're viewed as a resource. And when that happens, people say, hey, Paul, can I pick your brain about X, Y, and Z topic? So you're able to generate leads by solving problems when you use education-based marketing. Now you can buy the humor and the education together, here's what happens. People laugh and they say, hey, this person's cool. Like I would actually go out and grab a beer with this guy. I enjoy his company. But you blend in the education and they say, hey, this person's cool and they can actually help me. So that's yeah. the first two. It's very easy to make an education-based marketing post. It could be a free article that you write on LinkedIn. It could be a branded infographic where you take your headshot, upload it to Canva, and turn it into a shareable infographic, anything like that. The third area is adding value. Now, what you're going to notice here is everything actually builds on one another. Adding value is my personal favorite because we live in a world of scams, man. People have become skeptical and jaded about just about everything because we all know somebody who's gotten had over a scam. So it's not what you say, it's not even how you say it, it's how your audience feels when they receive that message. And when you just focus in on giving more than you take, your audience begins to feel like you're looking out for them. You become sincere. Oh, you yeah, good point. Somebody who wants to actually help them. Now, what's interesting is it doesn't have to be all business. I encourage people to actually talk here more about their hobbies. For me, that could be DJing, it could be craft beer, it could be boating, it could be whatever it is. But what happens is in an, on a non-business level, if you can become a resource and add value in another category, in my case, I love craft beer. People pick my brain on what beer to buy when they're at the liquor store or they're out and about. I've now 
carved out a piece of real estate in their brain that's aside from business. So anytime that they associate, I'm sorry, uh, see craft beer, they associate me with it. So you're now becoming omnipresent and free value leads to trust and people do business with those who they know and trust. Like, seriously, why would I tell you that I'm awesome when I can just have a satisfied customer share their win that they've had from working with me? So yeah. if you collect and repurpose reviews and take written testimonials and turn them into info, I'm sorry, not infographics, testimonial graphics on Canva, now you're effectively able to scale the sale. So you combine all of those in your marketing strategy online. You can meet somebody one time, add them on social media, and based off of what you post, they begin to like you. You grow rapport with them. And as I say, if you're sick and tired of dealing with cold process, process, process all you got to do is drop some heat and warm things up. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That was a ton of information right that there. Was a too. I need a drink of water after that. All right. I love it. Yeah. I, it's, man, I, I got to figure out where I want to start with some of this stuff, but I let's, I'm going to go like last thing a little bit backwards. Cause you, you touched on the testimonials. I such a powerful way to reinforce those relationships. And again, the trust and I guess too, with testimonials, let's do something too, is like just in a real practical way, maybe even how you or you heard somebody else even asking for testimonials, because mm-hmm. I know that I've talked to a lot of, I'll just keep calling us solopreneurs or just people that are really dedicated to their craft and that aren't utilizing testimonials and all. And I understand, I think everybody understands the value of testimonials because we do it. We do it all the time. We look at reviews. We, if we're going to work with somebody, if, if somebody who has testimonials versus somebody doesn't, I, I'm just going to psychologically and emotionally, I'm going to gravitate towards that person because enough people work with them. It took the time to even write something that in itself speaks volume. So I guess in a real practical way, either yourself or some people you've helped coach or talk with, what are just some real basic ways? Is it just going to start asking people that you've done business with, or do you really, is it really an intentional type of movement to try to get some of those testimonials? Instead of me explaining, do you mind if I actually just demonstrate? you mind if I just share my screen? Absolutely. Yeah. So what I'm going to share with everybody right now is a super, a super easy way to do this using LinkedIn. A lot of people ask me like, hey, where should I get reviews? Like I don't have a website or I don't have a centrally located place. Should I do it on Google? Should I do it on Yelp? Like the easiest place to start is on LinkedIn. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a screen share real quick. Give me about five seconds. Cool. So Paul, is my uh, screen sharing right now? It is still loading. So we'll give it just a sec here. It does not. There we go. We're on. Yep. Uh, you're there. Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to break a couple things down on LinkedIn, which again is a free platform that every single business owner should have. You can go to your profile and there is a place that you can actually have people leave you a review. It's not called review. It's called recommendations, which is right mm-hmm. here. So um, anytime that I do a speaking engagement or I have a client that completes my three day class course, uh, crash course, I just ask, Hey, Can you share your experience working with me on LinkedIn? And now you have all the stuff that's here on your profile. So I'm actually going to give you all a really easy way to do this. So I'm going to go to your profile, N-E-L-H-A-R-T, or how do I spell your last name? Yeah, Nelhart, N-E-L-H-A-R-T. Ah, there we go. So I'm on your profile right now, which means, let's say that you and I just got done working together. Here is a really easy script that anybody can use regardless of the industry. You literally just go right over here where it says more and you go to request recommendation from there it's going to say, Hey, how is it? What is your relationship with Paul or so-and-so at this point? I'm going to put Paul was a client of mine, select the business and you include a personal note. Here's a foolproof way to do this. Literally say, Hey Paul, I've done a really lousy job of asking for testimonials over the years. Would you mind sharing your experience working with me on LinkedIn? It would really help me out. Click send. And now what's going to happen is you are going to get a direct message through LinkedIn. It's going to give you a link to leave me one and then it would show up. It doesn't look like you have any, but it would show up right there on your page. So that's my personal, personal recommendation of an easy thing that everybody can do regardless of the industry to get a review. 
Super That's easy. amazing. Dude, thank you so much. I personally, I, I forgot I was even on this in this call for a second. I was just so engaged in that. <laughs> that is, it is honestly, that could not be any easier. I think it's there's, calming. and honestly, what's cool is a lot of the things you've taught, you talk about even just here, or we've spoke before is the simplicity because everybody's busy. And I think there's always a, there's a lot of times too, we put barriers in our head. Oh, that's going to be a huge project. There's a huge overcome on that. It's going to suck up time. I got to start asking people favors. In all honesty, we've all worked with, there's seven degrees of separation with everybody, but we've worked over the collective years. We've worked with tons of people, we'll just say, depending on our age. <laughs> it could be hundreds, could be dozens, could be, and even probably coworkers. What was your experience with me in past jobs? I really appreciate that. I think that's a very helpful, real practical application or tip for anybody listening. I'll actually go one layer deeper. So reviews are important, but what else is important is who actually sees these reviews. So what you can also do from there is you can take that and you can upload it to a website called Canva. Canva is a do-it-yourself marketing platform where you can copy and paste a review like that. You can take somebody's LinkedIn headshot and then you could just turn that into a graphic. So at this point, what you're effectively doing is you're scaling. Sure. So that now, which originally lived on LinkedIn, you can take and post this on Facebook and Instagram. And that's how you max out your distribution. So that's an easy win. For anybody who wants to get a review and repurpose it and say, hey, I exist on other platforms. Yeah, no, I, that's really amazing. I love it, man. That was, it looks like a really sharp looking testimonial page there too. That's nice, man. really nice, man. Yeah. Is Let's jump because you mentioned the Canva and I do have a number of other things. So I want to keep going backwards on what we talked about, but touching on Canva really quick. I know I've dabbled in it a little. It seems very user friendly. It's pretty easy. I guess from a methodology or, or an approach do you feel like, or a learning curve, maybe just you have some just general advice with that. Do you try to, and then also too, it's I'm stacking a couple different questions on here, but there's also our brand, our, our look, our feel, our continuity, and kind of what we're posting. So if you're swimming in Canva, do you got a little bit of like artistic graphic design advice or does Canva do a pretty good job at, at keeping some brand continuity for you? Here's my graphic design advice. Don't try to do this on your own with Canva because you will get frustrated. I got so frustrated with Canva that I deleted the app off of my phone. What's great is you can go there and just search for testimonial graphic template and you'll see 10,000 of those that will show up. Okay. So do something that somebody has already made, but then make it your own. It doesn't have to be original. It just has to look original. So if you take the framework that somebody's already made for you and you swap out your colors, you swap out your picture and it's effectively copy and paste, you can get good enough where in two minutes or less, you can make something like I just showed you. In two minutes or less, you can take your LinkedIn profile head and turn it into a branded infographic that you can now start using to generate leads. Okay. Don't reinvent the wheel is what you're saying. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it's already there. The What's interesting too is I'm triggered the memory of, there was a, there's an article and I want to say it was like something Kelly, man, like Kevin Kelly or Keith Kelly. It's a, his initials are KK, but he's talking about a thousand thousand fans, a thousand followers. You really, you don't need, I think people get hung up on social media and they need a million followers, a million views. I think you just need a, you need the tribe of Seth Godin talks about the tribe. You need the community. It's building the community of really, and having that authentic, uh, those connection points, I guess in, and that's, I, that's how I see it. I don't think you need millions and millions of viewers. That's cool. If somebody has that, but I think the average person does get intimidated too about building it. I think that there's a sense of, again, mental barriers. I need to have hundreds of thousands or a million or whatever, or it's not reaching it. I, and I really, I personally don't believe that, but do you have any kind of thoughts in that size and scope of what, as people start posting with their small business or independent business? Yeah. In one comment I'll make is it's easy to get discouraged. When we look at these big accounts, it's easy to say, Hey, I suck. Because you see somebody that has 15,000 followers or 100,000 followers or 300,000 followers. The reality is a lot of those could be bots. Uh, One of the easiest ways to check specifically on Instagram if somebody paid for followers is look at who has 10,000 plus followers and then look at any of the posts that they get and see how many comments are on it. If there's somebody who has 10 to 15,000 real followers and they make a post and there's no comments, 
good chance that they're bots. So it's oh, easy for right. us as business owners to get yeah. to, to just get caught in that vicious cycle of comparing ourselves from one to another. The example right. that I always use and the metric that I keep is you and I, again, last night we went to a networking event and what, did we meet maybe five to 10 new people? Were you set? Let's just round it up and say 10. Are you satisfied if you met 10 new people? Oh, it's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Great, for sure. Yeah. So what if your post on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn got you in front of 10 brand new people that didn't know you and they engaged? So that's the metric that I like to think. But the cool part is when somebody shares your content, and this is key specifically with the humor and the education piece, is when somebody shares a meme that has your logo on it and has your brand messaging, they've essentially passed your business card along, but in a really cool way. Yeah. So what most people don't realize is you can go to a website called imageflip.com. It is the biggest director of memes on the internet. In about 30 seconds, you can make a meme, add your logo to it. And if somebody finds it funny and they share it, they just pass along your business card with zero expense to you in a cool way. That's awesome. Yeah, very cool. The it made me think of two was, I guess, were those digital, I'll call them digital assets. That's what I was hesitating there. I was trying to figure out how I wanted to phrase that. They sit out there. And I guess there's a few different kinds because I know that you have a really, uh, you have an awesome ebook that you'll gift, you just gift people, which is amazing. So there's, that sits out there, that's live. I guess when it comes, and I do want to come back to that too, but with post, do you, I'm asking maybe your opinion, do you feel like they get buried pretty quick? Does that data just get cycled through? And then at that point, is there a cadence or a commitment of, how many posts or is it really surrounded more by what type of business you're doing as far as like the quantity and, and the frequency of how, how often you post? I would say just as a rule of thumb, just figure once a day post. Could be more, oh, okay. could be a little bit less. And it all has to boil down really to where your customers are at. My background is in the DJ world and in selling cars. Two completely different fields, but everybody could be a prospect. Somebody that I may not know could be getting married. And because somebody saw a meme of a bad DJ at a wedding and hey, don't let this be you, call Alan, they could have found that funny and now all of a sudden linked me with a referral. So what's interesting is it's not the frequency, it's mm -hmm. the consistency. If you are okay. top of mind, keep this in mind, Paul, is the average person sees between 4,000 and 10,000 advertisements every single day. It's a crazy amount of number, uh, a crazy amount of noise that we have to cut through. Half of the battle really is getting noticed. The other half is getting remembered. And if you are staying consistently top of mind, people will remember that. And it's, it's funny. It's also very easy for us to get hung up on how many people engaged. Oh, hey, does my post suck? Nobody liked it. Nobody engaged. Nobody shared. What I have had people, I kid you not, I've had people that I haven't talked to in six, seven, eight years that I'm still connected with on social media that I've ran into out and about, whether it's at the grocery store, a bar, an event, whatever it is, I've had them come up to me and say, oh my God, dude, I love the stuff that you're posting online. These freaking memes are hilarious. These live from the lot videos that you do are hilarious. In, in the back of my mind, all I'm thinking is, would it kill you to smash the freaking like button once in a while? <laughs> so I know you still exist. So you just never know who's actually Absolutely. one of these things. So I call that the playing to an empty room. And I have a marketing background and obviously sales, communication stuff. Yeah. But there is that when, as you start building, you're consistently, you're showing up, you're continually showing up and you're playing in the empty room, you're playing in the empty room. And all of a sudden it, there's some momentum and you have a little bit of activity and maybe you have to go play in an empty room again. And, but then you're consistent, you show up and it's again, to reinforce what you already said is that consistency and continuity in that is it's a very powerful thing. It's cumulative. It magnifies it, momentum. Uh, it'll perpetuate what you're trying to do as long as you keep showing up. For sure. Yeah. So let's jump to two other ones. One, I, always, I love talking about humor and in, in, in essence of humor is you're like subverting expectations or disrupting what's the expectations of what somebody's in a sense, you're really taking them down a line or and taking a quick turn, obviously with a GIF or, and which is funny, I wasn't ever sure like years ago, I was never sure, is it a GIF or a GIF? I'm sure, I don't know if that's ever I don't been- I argument before. has ever been settled. I don't know if it ever will be. I don't know. I was always calling them GIF when they first came out. I always saw the GIF and I was like, oh, it was a GIF, but I don't know, I hear GIF, but it doesn't matter regardless. You're gonna just observe subverting expectations. And with, with a GIF or a still, you're capturing that and either a comparison or an opposition or a juxtaposition or a juxtapoint. 
do you, everybody kind of approaches humor a little bit in, and I, I'd imagine too. So this is two things. One is I would imagine we've got to be careful this day and age. It's what we post. It's a sensitive world. And yeah. so it has to be probably, I, I don't want to assume what you're doing, but I would imagine it has to be a light humor, very common knowledge humor. There's something to be said with that. And I would say too, that do you feel like you just got to have it very simple? Or I think sometimes too, I've seen stuff online where it's like, there's a, somebody will post a joke and it's just, it doesn't land with a lot of people. I, when you're talking about business and humor, you, I'm assuming, I personally feel you probably have to keep it light. You have to keep it simple and direct. Do you have some personal rules that you work within or you just, whatever sparks at the time? Yeah. So I would always recommend, I'm just going to talk about memes and gifts for a second. Mm -hmm always dumb it down to a fifth grade level because before sure. people read, they scan. People are literally doing this all day on their cell phones. They're mindlessly scrolling. So they're looking for something that will actually hold and stop their, I'm sorry, hold their attention and stop the scroll. I'll give you a couple examples, actually. I'll just do a, another screen share. Is my uh, screen sharing right now? It's still low. There it is. Got it. Awesome. Cool. So a <clears throat> couple examples of this. I'm just going to use some car related examples. So take this right over here. It's a meme, but all it really is, is it's a picture with a caption. But let's talk about how much is actually going on right here in this picture. For starters, mm -hmm. you have a woman who is furious and she's yelling at her husband. This image resonates with people. We've all had an argument of some sort. So now that is the shared truth. I, I think of it like this. All a meme is, is shared truths with the element of surprise. So the shared truth is the picture. A picture is worth a thousand words because of emotion. So if we just add a caption, which again can be done in about 30 seconds, we've now framed this and we've created a story. The caption says, what happens when you buy a car without calling me first? So what am I saying without really saying it is I'm saying that the majority of the world knows somebody or they've personally had a lousy car buying experience in the past. This is what happens when you buy a car without calling me first. Very simple. No graphic design skills are needed, but it's a one-liner. What happens when you buy a car without calling me first? Now, what's interesting is there's a great book on this. It's called Marketing Made Simple by Donald Miller. And it mm -hmm. talks about branding is an exercise in memorization. So in this case, you can take that same message and you can apply it over a different picture. You can have somebody who's frustrated, somebody that's drank five or six beers side by side, and you could use the same caption this is how it feels when you buy a car without calling me first. You can also take this and bring it to a GIF. Over there, you got a dude that decided it would be a good idea to jump into a frozen pool. It doesn't work out as planned. So that's how it feels when you buy a car without calling me first. So where am I going with this is this is light humor, but it's really an advertisement and it's simple. A fifth grader can understand it and it will stop the scroll. Absolutely love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I think humor is a very powerful thing. And I also, you touched on it when you were first explaining as well, too, is it can be overdone as well, too. So you become a little bit, not clownish, but not serious about your craft. If all you're doing is sarcasm and humor and there's a little bit of lost in there. So humor with, mixed with the focal point. I really like that. I think that's a for sure. Yeah. The whole idea is to make you approachable. And this works yeah. really good if you are in a field that some people would consider to just be stale or boring. If you sell yeah. insurance, if you sell life insurance, if you're a financial advisor, all things like that, let's be honest, man, these are not sexy conversations. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever met one person that's woke up and said, dude, I can't wait to talk about life insurance today. Right. So this is how you lighten the mood and make yourself approachable. Because if you sell a boring service or product, although it's extremely valuable, at a networking event, you're going to eventually run out of stuff to talk about. Somebody like that, they see you, they actually start approaching you at the next networking event and they say, hey, dude, I love what you posted. That last one was hilarious. Like, yeah. It makes you approachable. But that education beast says, hey, I'm actually a human being just like you. I have a sarcastic sense of humor, but I also know my stuff. So let's talk business. That's yeah, the I, I love it. So two things in my mind too, that I want to make sure I talk about one. Do I want to talk about the ebook, but first I was going to touch on something that you'd said the word free, which is really cool because about posting about advertising. And I was listening to a, a Gary V and I recognize this prior to the, it as well, but he 
articulated it much better. But back, we'll say back in the day, you had to pay for advertising. You had to pay to be put in an ad. If it was a mailer, if it was a billboard, whatever that version of it, TV spot, radio spot, whatever that was, it was insane. It was, it's obviously, it's still an industry, but you wanted to be, get exposure to the market, you had to pay to do it. Now, what's insane, yes, there is competition for our attention span, to your point, and but it is free. So I think what happens is people start complaining about it not working or doing it a little bit and then not continuing. They're like, it didn't work. It didn't, I didn't get attention. I didn't get likes. I didn't get anything. And it wasn't consistent. Didn't stay with it, but, but it's free. How can, where else could you get this, that type of exposure for no cost? Obviously there's a bit of a cost of your time to put the effort in, but to your point, you were, you have some real practical, we'll say quick ways of actually delivering something to the social media platforms. It's, I think it's just a reinforcement of what you're saying, but I, I think this is an, it's obviously an incredible time with that aspect of the advertising. It, it's an incredible time. And here's the other thing that we're quick to overlook. If the product is free, it's because we are the product. We ask yeah. ourselves, all right, so Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, these are all billion dollar companies, yet the platforms are free. How does that happen? It happens because they use our data and they sell it to advertisers. And that's why they have the most targeted ads on the planet. So I'm sure a lot of us have a love-hate relationship with social media. But at the end of the day, it is simply a tool. And the yeah. fact that you are either using it or it is using you. And I just explained how it's using you. But it, it is free. Here's the thing about free is great, but there is still an expense and it's your time. So I get, and this is what I share with all my clients. And you brought up the ebook earlier. When I do my speaking engagements, a lot of people get excited because this is all do it yourself stuff that they could actually implement in two minutes time or less. So people have asked me for my slide deck. I don't want to give out my slide deck. You know what? I would rather condense it because if I give you a 75 to hundred page slide deck, a, you're not going to read it. And B, if you do read it, you're going to have to print it out. And that's 100 sheets of paper. And anything worth saying is worth saying briefly. So why wouldn't I just condense it? So I have a 15-page ebook that I give to people. But what's better than free is fast. You could get free tickets to Six Flags Great America. But if you have to wait two to three hours in line, are you really going to have a good time? So if you want to go fast, you can either read the book or you can hire the author. When it comes to doing social media, there's no one size fits all answer for it. There's people who specialize in growing a million, million plus follower accounts for just images. It could be fashion. It could be watches. It could be cars. And then they monetize it on the back end by influencer marketing or paid shout outs. There's so many different ways to use it that it gets overwhelming. And us as salespeople and business owners are quick. We're very quick to throw in the towel and say, hey, I suck at this. Right. Yeah. And get that little bit of fatigue or feel silly or stupid. There's a lot of different ways that people identify with it. But what's more important? Is it growing your business more important <laughs> and putting that time in? Right. You're going to have to, you're going to have to put the time in. And I do think too, that I think one of the reasons I liked your ebook, I, I like the idea of the ebook that you, like you were talking about, and this is really my take on it, is that digital asset really sits out there. It's such a valuable piece that people can enjoy for a long time. Or if it's living on your website, and I say this too as advice if somebody else is going to do some type of ebook. And you, I'm sure you could actually edit it, update it over time as things evolve or as resources evolve. But what a powerful, useful tool and a, and a great way to give to the marketplace and, and be undeniable, be that expert, be that thought leader so that people will approach you to your point. They're going to come to you, they're going to be top of mind. So yeah, and, I kind of that. That. and it's super easy for anybody to get something like that set up. An ebook doesn't have to be anything glamorous. You can right. have a checklist, whatever it is. Let's just, let's scrap the idea of an ebook. Let's just talk about a lead magnet because that's essentially what it is. You and mm -hmm. I went to a networking event yesterday. I could option A, give somebody a business card. It's going to end up in the trash or they're just going <laughs> to forget about it. Or I could say, Hey Paul, I really enjoyed this conversation. I just want to give you a free copy of my ebook that will show you how to dominate the newsfeed without spending a dime. If you want it, just scan this QR code, fill out the form, and two things happen there. Number one, I've actually given you something that's tangible. Now mm -hmm. you have something to print out, read. You can associate that value that you've learned from the ebook with me. So there's a little bit of reciprocity that's there, but the most important part, I've now collected data. If you've ever wanted to get a sales funnel set up, it all starts with a lead magnet, something that you can give out of value in exchange for a name, email address, and phone number. You could be mm -hmm. great at sales, 
But in order to sell, you must first create an opportunity to sell. And that's the purpose of a lead magnet. So there's nothing stopping you from going on chat GPT right now, utilizing AI and just asking for 10 lead magnet ideas for blank industry. There's nothing stopping you from it. I right. would encourage you to make it your own. I'm against having AI writing a hundred percent of something that you personally I agree. Up, yeah. There's nothing stopping you. Yeah, I agree. And I do want to add to that actually with the AI continuing to write, I think people are using that more and you can hear it when you read it. You can, I think and maybe not every time, but a lot of times you can really tell. So I think people still using their authentic voice, writing as much as possible and having AI either expand on it, clean it up. I think that's a really, it is an incredible tool it's, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with using it to accelerate uh, yeah. all the content or the information you're trying to put out. I think personally, I just feel like people need to make sure that they put their authentic thoughts and their authentic, their individual uh, way of speaking in there as much as possible and having it. That's just my opinion anyway. Yeah. So. It, it, it's best to just use it as your thinking partner. At the end of the day, look yeah. at this there's nothing stopping you from having it write an article or an ebook for you. But the last thing that you want to do is give somebody an ebook and they read it and they say, all right, this information's wrong. Now you just lost all credibility. That's well, a good point. The opposite of that. And I give you an ebook that chat GPT wrote and you say, dude, I love what you said in chapter three, paragraph one. That shit was life changing. Meanwhile, I, I have no idea what's in it because A, I didn't write it and B, I didn't even read it. So you yeah. never that to be you. And unfortunately, it's happening. You and I, we both know it's happening. When the barrier of entry at this point has just been diminished because anybody can do this stuff with either a free account on Google Bard or chat GPT, you know what, this is the kind of stuff that's going to happen. So yeah. absolutely, the authenticity is key. You want to make it your own. And really, if you're going to give something out, make sure it's reflective of your brand and your stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That was incredible, man. I really appreciate. I like the heat. So do me a favor. What is the heat again? Humor, humor, education, value, and trust. The humor shows your personality and your marketing. And that's important because people don't buy from brands. They buy from the people that represent brands. So that shows, hey, I'm just like you. I have a sense of humor. I'm not a faceless corporation. I'm not just a number that works here. I am an actual person that we can hang out. You can have a beer with me, whatever, yada, yada, yada. We can talk shop. The education says, I actually know what I'm talking about. This allows you to be positioned as a resource. And when you are a resource, put your stuff and you appear competent and you are now able to generate leads or opportunities to sell because you solve a problem in the marketplace. The A is adding value. This shows your intentions. This shows that you don't have commission breath and you're just trying to simply make a sale. You're actually trying to help somebody by adding value to their situation. That could be business related. It could be non-business related. Whatever it is, free value leads to trust and people do business with those who they know and trust. Yeah. Thank you so much, Alan. I appreciate uh, your time and jumping on here and we'll definitely do this again. Likewise, brother. I appreciate the opportunity.